Uh, Chronic Hoosiers with us. A lot going on this week, man. A lot to be determined. Uh, bubbles, Boston bubbles, Indiana's on a bubble. You look here and there. They're, uh, they're on Mike DeCourcy's bubble. I look at uh, Joe Lenardi. He's got them. They're, he, he has Indiana his, as his first team out, which is actually a good sign to me because I'm thinking if they beat Michigan – all it takes is one of those last four end teams to lose, and they swap. Now, that's Joe Lenardi and not the NCAA, but he's pretty close. Um, SMU, Wyoming, Xavier, Rutgers is one of those teams. I don't see them getting dropped in, in, in place for Indiana chronic because Rutgers just beat Indiana at home. Yeah, they uh, they certainly didn't do themselves any favors with uh, you know dropping seven out of their final nine contests. Um, I, at this point, it's there's so many balls up in the air. Um, you have to assume that Indiana is only going to be safe uh, with multiple victories in Indianapolis. I, I think it would be uh, it would be really risky to uh, to put the house on one win against Michigan and expect that to be enough. Um, you know, while the overall profile may stack up favorably against some of the bubble teams, uh, as we've already seen this week and pretty much since the month started, um, there, there's bid thieves everywhere right now. It's, uh, it's one of those where Indiana had their future and their, you know, had their fate in their hands. Uh, they fumbled it and they've got one last crack at it, uh, up in Indianapolis here this weekend. Yeah, no, for real though. Um, and this is. This is one of those situations where even assuming they, they beat Michigan, you're still looking at, at a, uh, a very negative close to the season, which just opens the door for recency bias among the selection committee. Um, I just I, I would not feel comfortable assuming one win is going to be enough. Uh, and I would also condition all that on uh, Joe Lenardi's reputation uh, as not maybe the most accurate bracketologist. He certainly gets the most airtime because of his platform at ESPN. But uh, when you look at the bracket matrix and where um, where Indiana is currently projecting right now, they're only present in 21 or 11.67 of uh, all the bracketologists. I think they're up to like 118 now that are comprised in the bracket matrix. So they are certainly um, not where you want to be at this point uh, at the close of the regular season. But, uh, you know, they, they continue to, to control their own destiny here. There's still games on the schedule. Um, I, I think two wins should be more than sufficient for them, uh, but it's going to be a really tough pull because as you look at their their path in the Big Ten tournament, uh, they have not beat Michigan this year. They have not beat Illinois, um, and I don't know that I want to see Rutgers in the uh, the semifinals either. Quite frankly, Kevin, every time we <laughs> Kevin, every time we hear Indiana has their uh, their their destiny in their hands, we've heard that a lot this year. But every time, it's they've dropped it. Kevin. Chronic? Yeah, no, no question. You. I, I think, no, I, and I think true that, you know, like Illinois and Michigan, as I alluded to earlier, I mean, those are two of your most lopsided losses in the Big Ten this season. Certainly the bracket didn't do them any favors. You know, you would have uh, liked to have seen, you know, Wisconsin beat Nebraska and you'd have Wisconsin at that second game, perhaps with Johnny Davis ailing or out because I guess he's had, had that knee issue on that flagrant foul that would have served uh, Indiana much better. But uh, I think that, you know, uh, Hey, you know, it is a new season, though, and, and, you know, maybe you come out and maybe you finally have that game that you shoot lights out, which, you know, they haven't had, uh, it seems like, in forever, but maybe they have one of those 10 for 23 point. I guess they did against Minnesota, right, where they had that 10 for 23 point game. Uh, maybe they have another one of those in them, and Indy didn't Parker Stewart had his one really good shooting day this season against Notre Dame at India at, uh, at uh, you know, uh, at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, you know, if you remember – Back in the day, Armand Franklin used to play well there. Maybe maybe you have that kind of day where somebody surprises you, but uh, you're going to need that and um, some resiliency and some toughness uh, in order to uh, you know, pull out that win against Michigan and you advance. Just saw a tweet that uh, there are tickets for $3 to the ACC tournament and $4 to the SEC tournament in Tampa. Yeah. That's crazy. Where's the ACC term? Is it in Greensboro or no? Uh, you know what? 
probably Charlotte, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, it's Oh, it's in Brooklyn. Oh, wow. It's in, uh, okay, so that's, yeah. They're at the, 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 the Nets. Barclays. Barclays yeah. Center, wow. yeah. Yeah. Now, see, yeah, I, that, really that doesn't make sense to me. If you're not in chronic, if you're not going to play in Madison Square Garden, why does the ACC feel compelled to go to New York when, I mean, to me, they should be playing somewhere in the middle of the coast. Uh, of course, what do I know? Same reason the uh, Big Ten saw fit to bring Rutgers into it. They're just chasing the TVs, you know. And at the end of the day, the thing about New York, no matter what conference you're 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 hosting there. Every conference has a huge alumni representation in New York City in that area, just because it's. If it's you don't, you're pretty sad. Yeah. yeah, no, seriously yeah. though. I mean, even the MIAC <laughs> has got a strong alumni contingency there. Uh, it's it's just it, it highlights the uh, the folly of uh, of the way they're chasing clout and, and, and viewership, and, and everybody's trying to stake a flag in somebody else's yard and conquer the territory, but. You know, there's five dollar tickets available for the the Big Ten tournament. I saw yesterday. You know, getting the door price is still pretty cheap. Uh, it's certainly one thing that I, I don't think stacks up real well for Indiana for a team that has uh, that's needed uh, the confines of home to often play some of their best ball. Uh, although they, they, I felt like they they put up a good fight in Mackey, but nevertheless, uh, for a gym that that would presumably give them a good home court advantage, uh, that eleven thirty time slot on a Thursday morning. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I fully expect to see a lot of loud and proud Hoosiers in there. Uh, but it's certainly not going to be the turnout you would expect if it were a primetime game or at least something in the afternoon session. Not just that, though. I mean, I, as an athlete, playing at 1130 in the morning is just – your body is not used to that. And I don't care if you get up at 7 that morning. Your body, I just don't know that your body is used to playing a competitive game at 1130 in the morning. Um, your, your body is used to, hell, they practice at, I think two 30 in the afternoon every day, whatever time their practice is. Uh, the games are always in the evening and you're, you're conditioned to that. It's, it's different and difficult to play at 1130. I don't care who you are. Yeah. And that's kind of one of the uh, surprising parts about the tournament bracket is the, uh, you know, when you look at the way those time out, the uh, the number one seed line takes the early slot every day uh, as the tournament progresses. And since the 8-9 is going to be what feeds into uh, Illinois after that, uh, I don't know if that plays in Indiana's advantage or not. At the end of the day, you can throw it all out the window, though. Um, Indiana just has to go out and play the best basketball of the season right now because otherwise they're, uh, they are going to fall short of uh, the goal that that I think they themselves accepted and, and most of us outside the program uh, felt like we were rightly holding them to, and that was making the NCAA tournament. So um, fascinated to see how it plays out. Fascinated to see what happens. You know, last time we were staring at an NIT berth, um, you know, the program politely declined, uh, at least hosting it, and proceeded to go down to uh, to Georgia and get embarrassed by, uh, by Josh Pastner's tech. So uh, it's it's fascinating that here we are a couple years later and the program is now once again gladly uh, signaling they'd like to host it. Uh, they'd like to continue playing basketball and they'd like to see just how much further this team can grow and develop. Um, you know, what, what really is, is going to be interesting is how the experiences of the next two weeks uh, impact the future for Indiana. Because assuming that they don't get two wins, assuming they don't get an NCAA bid, um, what type of taste did this leave in everybody's mouth? Um, how do they grow from it and learn from it? How do they mo you know, uh, divine inspiration from it to make themselves better this time next year so we're not having these, these winner or die tournaments or games? Um, and just all the appurtenant grief that, that they have to listen to. Uh, it's just really, really unfortunate for a team that, that was very, very solidly in just a month and some change ago. Uh, to be put in this position right now, but it's it's not necessarily what life gives you. It's how you respond to it, and uh, there's a whole lot left to learn about these Hoosiers and uh, what type of response they can muster given the circumstances now.